I can get it. I can get it together. We are. So you got the practice on that for assigning redox numbers and also for the problems. All righty. I remember if I turned on the recording. That's better. All right. So oxidation numbers are not exactly like charges, although some people use them interchangeably, but really oxidation numbers are kind of randomly assigned to elements. So you can see the movement of electrons, how the electrons change. And we'll get to a unit where we talk about uh, electricity and batteries and those types of things. And then you'll see why the movement of the electrons matters as far as producing a electricity or being able to um, have a battery from that. But all right, so we're looking at oxidation reduction, and they involve electron transport, all single replacement reactions and combustion reactions or redox, and then some of the other types can be redox sometimes. And really the only way you know if it's redox is to assign um, oxidation numbers and then see if they change from reactants to products. Um, and they're a little bit different to balance, and that's what we'll do. I don't know if we'll get to it today or tomorrow. So these are some terms to remember. Oil rig, if oxidation is loss of electrons. So oxidation is loss of electrons. So you would get more positive. And then for reduction, reduction is gain of electrons. So you end up getting a uh, reducing the charge or becoming more, not necessarily more negative. You maybe go, go from a higher positive to a lower positive, but your charge is decreased in some way. And like I said, the oxidation number is assigned on the atom. And sometimes it'll be the same as the formula writing, but not always because it's really a random set of numbers to see electron movement. So Elliot, you said y'all were doing that in uh, biology, you said, so y'all actually like balancing the redox equations and all that? For, is that for the Krebs cycle or something like that? I can't remember. You, you don't know, okay. I didn't know if y'all were talking about a specific thing. All right, so obviously the first thing that you need to be able to do is to assign Oxidation numbers, because if you can't do that, then you can't see if any electrons have moved. So the easiest one, the oxidation stuff of an atom or an element is zero, and this includes your diatomics. The oxidation of a monoatomic, that shouldn't say ele element, that should say ion, is equal to its charge. Oxygen is a negative two in covalent compound. So that's gonna be the majority of what we work with, except in peroxides, then it would have a number of negative one assigned to it. And we talked about peroxide before. So an example of a peroxide would be H2O2. The hydrogen's a plus one. So the oxygen can't be a minus two here. It would have to be a minus one. Hydrogen is a plus one in covalent compounds and fluorine is a minus one. The sum of the oxidation states in a neutral compound should be equal to zero and the sum of the oxidation states if it's an ion should be equal to that ion, like for polyatomics. So like I said, a lot of things are gonna be very similar to whenever we talked about the charges. And you want to use these rules in order. So like you wanna start with number one, and move on down. 
So the fact that an element or a diatomic is equal to zero, that's why a successful single replacement reaction would always have to be a redox because it's going from zero and then it's becoming part of the compound and it can't be zero in a compound. So that's why those are, are always redox reactions. All right, so if we just look at a few of these, so I'm just gonna draw them out to make them a little bit bigger. So we said oxygen is a minus two. And since I have two of them, I have a total of minus four. So in this case, carbon would be equal to a plus four. And carbon is kind of one of the tricky ones because depending on what it is combined with, it changes from time to time. My SF6, we said fluorine is a negative one. So I have a total of negative six. So in this one, my sulfur would be a positive six. Now on this one, whenever I have NO3 minus, instead of my total be equal to zero, I want my total to be equal to a negative one. So once again, oxygen is a negative two. I have three of them. So I have a total of negative six. So what would my nitrogen be? Positive five, exactly. And if you struggle a little bit with that, you can kind of actually set up a little system where you can work them out. So like, let's say that I don't know my nitrogen, so it's my X. I know my oxygen, so that would be minus six because I have three of them. And that would be equal in this case to a negative one. So then, what? yes ma'am. Yes, for these. But really you're gonna see in a minute, Really uh, just assigning these becomes part of the process of balancing a redox reaction. So yes, and so then if I solve this little one, I would end up with a positive five. Yes, sir. Negative one, because that's just one of the rules. If it's an ion, instead of the whole thing being equal to zero, the whole thing has to be equal to whatever the charge is. And on these uh, particular type of reactions, there's a lot of uh, ions that'll have a charge instead of being neutral. And also just to make it a little bit more interesting, it doesn't have to be a whole number. You could have a uh, fraction. Yeah, I know, makes it fun, huh? So here, if I have F3O4, so if I kind of set up once again, to me, these are a little harder to just do in my head, but if I set this up as a little problem, and I said that Fe was my X, that's one I don't know. I have three X minus eight, because I know my oxygen is a negative two. That one doesn't equal a charge. That one does equal zero because it's neutral. And so from there, three X equals eight. And then I get X is equal to eight thirds. Now you'll see in a minute if we get to it today or when we get to it tomorrow, sometimes it's not so important that you know exactly what the charge is or more that you can see it change or that you can see it with either became more negative or it became more positive. So it's not, not really so much about knowing this exact value, but how knowing the element changed and whether it gained electrons and became more negative or whether it lost electrons and became more positive. All right. So on these, whenever something is oxidized, we said uh, or oil rig. So if it's oxidized is loss of electrons. And if it's the one that is oxidized, you call it the reducing agent. And then for my rig, reduction is gain of electrons. And if it's the species that is reduced, then it is the oxidizing agent. It's always the opposite kind of agent because if it's oxidized, then that means it's losing electrons. So it's causing the other species to be re uh, reduced. 
and vice versa. All right, so if we look at this one here, so here is my equation. I'm identifying which ones are oxidized and which ones are reduced. So since these two are just elements or diatomic by themselves, they both have a zero value. So those are the nice easy ones. Whenever I get over here to this, I really don't have one that's in the rules. So I'm gonna go with iodine with it, since it's a halogen and it has a negative one. So that means aluminum has to be a positive three in this case. So aluminum went from zero and then over here, now it is a positive three. So was it oxidized or was it, was it oxidized or was it reduced? It was oxidized. It went from zero, it lost three electrons and we say it was oxidized. So it is the reducing agent. And then my iodine went from zero to over here. It's a minus one. So it would be the one that was reduced because it gained one electron. So it is the oxidizing agent. Yes, ma'am. Because at this point right here, I had to assign one. And since it is a negative ion and it's a halogen, I gave it the negative value. But so on this particular one, let me kind of move, step back a little bit. These two are zero, right? That's the easy part, okay? So even if I didn't know exactly what the charge was when it's aluminum iodide, just by looking at that, I know that the iodine has some negative value, right? Because of the way it's written. And the aluminum has some positive value. So even if I didn't know their exact oxidation numbers, I could still figured those two things out because either way, aluminum is going from zero to something positive. So it had to be oxidized. Iodine is going from zero to something negative. So it has to be reduced. So that's what I meant. Sometimes it's not so important figuring out the exact oxidation number, but how you, if you can just see the change in it is really what becomes important. All right. So we got a couple here. So why don't y'all work try these two and see if you can figure out what is oxidized and what is reduced. All right, if we look at that first equation, 
which out of all of that, which what is it easiest one to decide something about? Oxygen, right? To me, oxygen is, and that's just and only been, only because it goes from zero, and then I know that here it's got a negative two value because oxygen is always going to have a negative two value unless it's a peroxide. So that means that my oxygen went from zero to negative two. So was it oxidized or was it reduced? It was reduced, which means it's the oxidizing agent. Remember reduced doesn't mean reduced in the number of electrons, it means reduced in the charge. So now if I look at this one, my once again, I could I know this has some negative value because of the way it's written. I know this has some positive value. And so when I get over here, which one is going to make the big change on this one? Sulfur went from negative right here in this compound. Now, what is it? Positive. It doesn't matter so much that I know exactly what it is as a negative or exactly what it is as a positive, but I can see that it went from a negative to a positive. So that means my sulfur had to be oxidized. So it is the reducing agent. Now, if we did go back and we gave these values, we would give the sulfur a negative two, like its charge usually is, which would make my lead a positive two. Over here, I have a little bit more help because I have my oxygen. So my lead stayed a positive two over here. But what did my sulfur actually go to? A positive four because I had two oxygens. Each one is a negative two. So I would have to have a positive four to cancel out. Same thing over here, if I kind of think about this, I know that that is a zero, it's all by itself. And over here, I have a couple of things that help me out. I have my oxygen, which is a negative two. So that means my carbon has to be a positive two and my lead has to be a positive two. So to me, anytime I have a diatomic or an element all by itself, that makes it easy. So my lead went from a positive two to a zero. So what would it be? It would be reduced. Remember, it doesn't mean it has to go all the way to be negative. It just, the, the charge just has to go down. So it is the oxidizing agent. And then which one, what else do we have changed? Well, we know my oxygen didn't change, did it? Over here, it's minus two, and I have two of them. So what would my carbon have to be? Plus four, exactly. So my carbon went from two to a four, so it's oxidized. And that would be my reducing agent. So how do we feel about that? Okay with it? Okay. So next we're gonna to go to balancing these reactions and it can be a very long process, okay? So I'm gonna do, we'll see how many I get done today, maybe a couple, and then we'll continue to work on that. What is tomorrow, Thursday? Yeah, Thursday, yeah, we won't start anything new. So we'll see how far we, we get in this. Okay, so if you look at your practice, that I gave you, it starts off with just some easy things like assigning oxidation numbers. And then the second page is kind of like what we just did on those two problems. And then as you get to the last pages where there's a lot of room left, you'll see that that's actually balancing the reactions. All right, so whenever you're working with redox reactions, you work and balance them in what's called a half reaction method. So I'm gonna have my reduction half, and my oxidation half. So I work at them separately and then I put them back together. So that means at the very beginning, you're gonna to have to figure out what's getting reduced and what's getting oxidized so you can break them up into half reactions. So once you've done that, you want to balance all of your elements with coefficients like we usually have been doing except for oxygen and water. You wanna leave those alone. 
you want to balance oxygens by adding water. So that's definitely very different than what we've been doing. You want to balance any hydrogen by adding the hydrogen plus ion, excuse me. <clears throat> then you want to balance any charge by adding electrons to the mo more positive side. So that means you're going to have to be balanced with charge and elements. So that doesn't mean each side has to be equal to zero. It just means if I have one side is a plus two, my other side needs to be a plus two. Once you've done that, you want to make the number of electrons that are uh, gained be equal to the number of electrons that are lost by multiplying each half reaction by some factor so that you could do that to equal them up. So let's say, let's say that one half reaction had six electrons and another half reaction only had two. I would need to mu multiply that second half reaction by three. So I, because in the end, you want to be able to cancel your electrons out. Add your half reactions together, then you cancel out anything that you can on both sides, kind of like our net ionics. If the reaction occurs in basic solution, and we definitely won't get to that today, then you're going to add an equal number of hydroxide ions to both sides so that you can cancel out all those hydrogen ions. Because remember, H plus, that represents an acidic solution. You're going to make water on the side with the hydrogen ions and then, then if possible, cancel those out. And then when you're all said and done, you should be, like I said, balanced with regard to both charge and to the elements. It's a lot of steps up. So you need to memorize those steps, but to me, after you, you know, work through a few, then it becomes a little bit more obvious. All right, are y'all ready? Yeah. It's kind of like a puzzle to me. All right. All right, so here's our reaction. So my first thing that I'm gonna do is I need to divide them up. So I have to figure out what is being oxidized and what is being reduced. All right, so over here, we know my oxygen is a minus two. And over here, I don't even have any oxygen. That's weird, isn't it? So that's not gonna be of any help. So my oxygen over here is a minus two and I have four of them. And notice that's a little bitty negative sign. It's really hard to see, but y'all see that little negative sign? Yeah. So I don't want it to be equal to zero. I want it to be equal to my manganese. What do I need it to be equal to? No, if I have, because right now I have each oxygen is a negative two. So I have a total of negative eight if I do all of my oxygens. So what does my manganese be, need to be equal to? So when I add them together, I still end up with a negative one, a positive seven, right? All right, so I'm going to come back and array. We good? Yeah. Okay, so I got a positive seven and a minus two. And then over here, my MN went to, I think that's a little bitty plus two. Mercy, it's a little bitty red. All right, so I can at least figure out what something is. So my MN went from plus seven to plus two. So is it being oxidized or is it being reduced? Reduced. So I'm going to put a little bitty reduced and I'm going to write that half reaction. MNO4 minus gives me my MN2 plus. Okay, now my Fe was pretty easy. It was a plus two, and then over here it's a plus three. So that would be my oxidation half reaction. Fe2 plus two, Fe3 plus. So there are my two half reactions. I will tell you that I am very bad about dropping those signs as I start working through the problem. And then sometimes I don't realize it to the end when I can't get my charge balanced. And then I have to go backtrack. So be careful that you don't drop your signs. All right, so I'm gonna start with my reduction half. The first thing that I would do would balance any element that's not oxygen or hydrogen. So that would be my MN, but that's already balanced. I have one on each side. 
My next step would be to look at my oxygen and it says I add water for as many oxygen as I need. So I need four oxygen, so I'm gonna add four waters. Okay, next step is I'm going to balance my hydrogen by adding H plus. So I have four times two, eight hydrogen. So that means I need to put eight H plus over here. So I'm probably gonna make myself. All right, are we all good right then so far? All right, now I want my charge to balance. So I need to put electrons on my more positive side. So that's gonna be on this side, right? Because this is a plus two right now over here, I have a positive seven. Is that right? Eight, yes, a positive seven. So how many electrons do I need to add? What do I have? Eight, eight, seven, why do I? Okay. Why do I have six electrons? That doesn't seem like that, that was going to be right. Hold on a second, people. Oh, because I did it. I dropped my sign right here. Shoot. Okay, so sorry. I'm looking at this right here. I dropped my sign. So right now, this is what I want. I have a positive two. Right now, I have eight minus one, a positive seven. So wouldn't I need to add five electrons? So my charge would be the same on each side. All right. I'm going to double check myself. Yes, here I have five, negative six, positive two. So now I have a positive two on each side. The Fe won't be so hard. I don't have to worry about oxygen. I don't have to worry about hydrogen. How many electrons do I need to add? Just one electron, right? All right, so our next step is I want those electrons to cancel out. This equation has five, this one only has one. So I'm going to multiply this equation by five so I can get my electrons to be equal. So I end up with five Fe2 plus gives me five Fe3 plus plus five electrons. All right, are we good there? All right, now we're going to cancel out our electrons because remember, even though I have this separated into equation, it's really one. So if I have five electrons on my reactant side and five electrons on my product side, I can cancel those out. And now I'm ready to put it back together. Sometimes I kind of circle everything I have left so I won't miss anything. So, and down here I have that and I have that. So now I'm going to come and I'm going to put them back together. I'm going to have 8H plus plus MnO4 minus plus 5Fe2 plus. Now on my product side, Mn2 plus plus my 4 waters plus 5Fe3 plus. And that would be my final balanced equation. And if I check my charge, I have five over here and here I have, do I have five? Oh no, I have more than five, don't I have 17, eight, yeah, and my charge is balanced too. So that would be my final equation. So what other thing on that particular one, the only thing that canceled out was my electrons. What do you think is something else that might cancel out oftentimes? The hydronium or the, and also the water, because I didn't have to add water to this one because there wasn't any oxygen, but a lot of times you have to add water to both of them. So that's a kind of a common thing that also cancels out. All right, what do we think about that? Long, tedious, fun, just like a puzzle? You don't know about fun. So do we have any questions on it? And I mean, we'll do some more. And like I said, we'll take a little bit of time, but I will tell you my most common mistake, and I did it right here in my notes, is I like will forget to write those little charges. 
and then that messes you up from the very beginning. So be careful that you don't do that. All right, why don't y'all look at the sample problem and you don't have to just start off by seeing if you can identify the reduction half and the oxidation half. Start with that. Let's see if I may do it. So which was the easier one to kind of see off of this one? Yeah, the iodine, right? It went from a negative one to zero. Yeah. So it was my oxidation half. And then over here, if I went to the trouble of figuring it out, this MN is a positive seven and it went down to a positive two. So this would be my reduction half. And this particular MnO4 permanganate ion, I think they love to use those in reduction, oxidation reactions. All right, so then that's why I've got them separated. So anybody remember my next step? Balance the element. First, which in this one is already balanced in my reduction half, right? I already ha have one manganese on each side, but sometimes I forget to do that and I jump to the water and then I have to go back. So now we're at the point where we got to do water. So how many waters are we adding? Four plus four H2O. And then that my next step is I got to add what? I have my hydrogen and I need eight of them, right? All right, and then my next step is I need to get them balanced with regard to charge. So I got a positive two and over here I have seven. So I need to add how many electrons? Five electrons, right? Sorry, I'm just, I did the exact same thing in my work here. I dropped that negative sign again. All right, so then we're good on that one. Now we come to our oxidation. So what's the first thing I need to do here? But, right, which is another step that I tend to forget. So I need to put a two there. I don't have to worry about the water, so I don't have to deal with that. So now I just have to worry about the charge. So I need to do what? How many electrons? And I got two. So don't I have a total of negative two on my reactant side? So I need to put two electrons on this side. Okay. 
All right, so there are my half reactions. Now I need to get rid of my electrons. So what am I gonna to have to multiply my top one by? I have five electrons on one and two on the other. So what's the common number I'm gonna to have to get between those two? 10. So I'm gonna to have to multiply this by two and this one by five. All right, so let's do that. 10 electrons. 16 H plus, plus 2 M 2 1 M. Like if I was taking the AP test, I'd be talking out loud. All right, over here, then I'm going to have 10 of my iodide ion plus 5 O I 2 and then my 10 electrons. All right, as usual, I did not leave myself enough room, but the only thing that can cancel out because I didn't have to add water is just the electrons, right? So now I gotta come and put all the rest of this back together. All right, so. And it doesn't matter the order. My, get all of my reactants. All right, I think that's all of my reactants. And then on my products, I have my five iodine plus my two M N two plus plus my eight H two O. Then that's what we got. We should have a good, and then my charges are, I just did a really quick check to make sure my charges are balanced and I have a plus four on each side. So I'm in good shape with regard to that. Any questions? All right, why don't y'all try um, number 19 at home? And then we can start from there. Just because it's a word problem, it still isn't any different. In the end, you end up with an equation and you need to break it up into your two half equations. And remember, sometimes they look a little weird because maybe you'll have just an ion on one side and then on the other side, it will be combined with oxygen. So that seems weird to break that up in the half reaction, but that's because you'll add the water molecules, okay? And we'll stop there and then we'll talk a little bit more tomorrow about having putting them if it says that they're a basic solution. So if it says it's a basic solution, you can kind of think you're going to have to get rid of those H pluses. Because that's what's making it acidic. So we'll look at those tomorrow. Questions, comments? You don't want to think just in practice. You don't think it's fun, Ralph? Uh, you don't really mind it good. I don't really mind it either.